Hello, I'm Dr. Cheryl Dunn, and I'll be demonstrating an introductory financial accounting problem in which we are accounting for bad debts using the aging of accounts receivable approach. And the company that we're going to be doing this for is called Chiver's Company. So take a look at the problem. Okay, as you can see, I've copied the information that was given uh, for the amounts of the accounts receivable that total 188000 and the different percentages for the different age groups. In the aging of accounts receivable method, the idea is that the older our accounts receivable are, the less likely we'll be able to collect them. Uh, because if they're that old, there's evidently a problem. And so we expect to collect a much higher percentage of the current accounts. In other words, the percentage uncollectible is much lower, whereas the ones that are older, we have much higher uncollectible percentage, a uh, lower collectible percentage. We're going to use these percentages times these balances then and add them up to fulfill the first requirement, which is to calculate the amount of receivables that Chipers Company expects to be uncollectible, what we don't expect to be able to collect. And so if we multiply 80,000 times 5%, that's going to give us uh, $4,000. If we multiply 70,000 times 20%, that's going to give us $14,000. If we multiply 20,000 times 50%, that gives us $10,000. And if we multiply 18,000 times 70%, that's going to give us $12,600. If we then add these numbers together, they total to $40,000. $600. This is the amount that is uncollectible. So this would be your answer to part one of this question. Part two of this question asks us to calculate the net realizable value or the net receivable balance that you would be reporting on the balance sheet. And to get that amount, we take the accounts receivable account and we subtract the allowance from that. Now I should point out that this amount that we calculated that is uncollectible, that's the amount that we want to be our ending credit balance in the allowance account, the allowance for doubtful accounts. So the amount that we don't expect to be able to collect, that's what we want our allowance to end up being. So that means that on our balance sheet then, we want to show our gross accounts receivable, the amount that's actually in the accounts receivable account on our general ledger, which in this case is 188,000. That came from right there. And we want it to then show 40,600 as being uncollectible so that we will show a net realizable value or a net receivable balance of 147,400 dollars. So that would be your answer to part two. Now part three asks us what journal entry we would need to make given that our allowance account our allowance account currently has a $2,000 debit balance. And so part three is saying what journal entry do we need to make to record bad debts given that we have a $2,000 debit balance in the allowance. As we calculated here, we want the ending balance to be 40600 on the credit side. To get from the debit side to the credit side, that means we're going to need to make an even bigger entry on this side because the credits will need to exceed the debits by, 20, uh, by 2000 to get to this 4600 That means that our bad debt expense amount is going to have to be 42000 600 in this case.
And so our journal entry to record that would debit bad debt expense. for the 42,600 and then it would credit the allowance for doubtful accounts for 42,600. Part four then says, what if instead of this $2,000 debit balance, the allowance instead had a credit balance of 1500 So they're saying ignore what we did in part three and say instead that we had a 1500 balance in the allowance before we make any bad debt expense entry. We still, nothing in part one or part two changes. We still are estimating that we want the balance in the allowance to be 40600 on the credit side, given these percentages of these balances. The net realizable value is the same. It's the receivable balance minus what we think is uncollectible. So none of that changes. The only thing that changes is what entry we need to make for bad debt expense, given a different starting balance in the allowance account. Because this is a balance sheet focused approach, we, it matters what balance was already in the allowance because we're trying to get the allowance to a desired ending balance. So if it currently is 1500 and we want it to be 40,600, in part four, our expense entry is actually going to be a little bit smaller. So it's gonna be 39,000 $100 because that's the amount that we need to get from $1,500 to $40,600. So we would make the same entry. I won't repeat writing the accounts out, but instead of debiting bad debt expense for $42,600, we would debit it for $39,100 and we would credit the allowance account for $39,100. For $39, so that's the only thing that would change if our starting balance was 1500 credit instead of $2,000 debit. Thank you for viewing this demonstration and I hope you found it helpful.